Thank you for choosing LiftMaster. This video will provide an overview of how to install the LJ8900W commercial jack shaft operator on a sectional door. The LJ8900W is intended for use in commercial applications only. This product can be installed on high lift doors. This video is intended for demonstration purposes only. The procedures demonstrated should only be performed by trained professional installers and service technicians. Safe operation and servicing requires that you follow all instructions and safety advisories found in the manual. To locate a trained professional installer or service technician, go to liftmaster.com slash locate a dealer. This installation overview will cover the following topics. 1. Planning the installation. 2. Assembling the LJ8900W. 3. Mounting the operator. 4. Installing the cable tension monitor. 5. Installing the single button control station. 6. Installing the protector system. 7. Programming the travel. You can use the progress bar at the bottom of the screen to track where you are in the installation process. Before installing the operator, you need to survey the site. The door installation and wiring must be in compliance with all local electrical and building codes. Never use an extension cord, two-wire adapter, or change the plug in any way to make it fit an outlet. Be sure the operator is grounded. Here's what you need to check. The door must have a torsion bar and spring. The torsion bar must be one inch in diameter. This operator is not compatible with reverse wound drums. Measure from the center of the torsion bar to the ceiling. There must be three inches of clearance. Measure from the center of the torsion bar to the wall. There must be two and a half inches of clearance. Measure from the end of the torsion bar to the wall or the nearest obstruction. There must be eight and a half inches of clearance. If the torsion bar is too long or is damaged, cut the torsion bar. Measure from the bearing plate to the end of the torsion bar. There must be at least one and a half inches of torsion bar exposed. Make sure there is an electrical outlet within six feet of the installation area. To prevent possible serious injury or death from electrocution or fire, be sure power is not connected to the operator and disconnect power to the circuit before removing the cover to establish a permanent wiring connection. Check the balance of the door to make sure it moves freely and does not drift. As you raise and lower the door, inspect the torsion bar to make sure it doesn't move up or down or to the left or right. Any movement of the torsion bar could reduce the life of the operator. Any issues with the door or torsion bar and spring should only be corrected by a trained door systems technician. Be sure to close the door when finished with these checks. Remove any locks or ropes that are installed. Before assembling the operator, it's a good idea to lay out the parts. They include the motor unit with mounting bracket, the collar, the cable tension monitor, safety reversing sensors with mounting brackets, a single button control station, and hardware. The operator can be installed on either side of the door. We'll demonstrate assembly and installation for the right side of the door. Begin by attaching the collar to the operator. Loosen the set screws on the collar. Locate the side of the collar that has the larger hole and slide the collar all the way onto the motor shaft until the stop is reached. Rotate the collar so that the screws are facing toward you. Hand tighten the two set screws that are closest to the operator until they make contact with the motor shaft. Then tighten the set screws another quarter to half turn. Loosely attach the mounting bracket to the operator on the same side as the collar using the provided screws. The operator must be mounted at a right angle to the torsion bar to avoid premature wear on the collar. Slide the operator onto the end of the torsion bar and lightly tighten the set screws to temporarily help hold the operator in place. Make sure the collar does not touch the bearing plate. There must be at least one quarter inch of space between the collar and the bearing plate. Use a level to position the operator at a 90 degree angle to the torsion bar. Mark the mounting bracket holes on the mounting surface. Remove the operator and set it aside.
The mounting bracket must be attached to a solid surface, such as wood, concrete, or a door flag bracket. Do not attach the mounting bracket to drywall only. Make sure the screws mount into an underlying structural support, such as a 2x4. Drill 3 16 inch pilot holes at the marked locations. Drill through metal door rail plates if necessary. Slide the operator onto the end of the torsion bar and align the mounting bracket with the pilot holes. Hand tighten the set screws on the collar until they just make contact with the torsion bar. Secure the mounting bracket to the surface using the provided hardware. Double check to make sure the operator is still level and make any adjustment needed to the collar position. For a solid torsion bar, tighten the set screws an additional one quarter to one half turn. For a hollow torsion bar, tighten the set screws an additional three quarters to a full turn. Secure the mounting bracket to the operator. Thread the emergency release rope through the emergency release cable and pull until the red handle is at least six feet above the floor to avoid contact with vehicles to avoid accidental release. Secure the rope using an overhand knot and cut off any excess. The cable tension monitor features a roller that rests on the outside of the cable. It detects slack in the cable and will reverse the door, eliminating service calls for unspooled cable wire. Inside is a switch that is activated when slack in the cable allows the roller to depress. Activating this switch causes the door to reverse. The cable tension monitor must be properly installed before the operator will move in the down direction. Measure the distance between the cable and the surface where you will be mounting the cable tension monitor. In order to function properly, the door cable needs to be approximately three quarters of an inch from the mounting surface for the cable tension monitor. If the cable depth is too large, the cable tension monitor may not react quickly enough to prevent thrown cables. If the cable depth is too small, the cable tension monitor may cause nuisance reversals. Shimming and or door adjustments may be needed to achieve the proper cable depth. In this installation, we measured two and three quarters inches from the cable to the mounting surface. In order to achieve the proper cable depth, we'll need to add a piece of two by six. We recommend installing the cable tension monitor on the same side of the door as the operator. The monitor comes configured for left side installation. For right side installation, remove the snap ring holding the roller in place. Move the roller to the opposite side and reattach the snap ring. When mounting the monitor, be sure to position the roller between 2 and 6 inches below the drum. Position the cable tension monitor where it will not come in contact with any moving parts of the door. Be sure to mount over a wood support or use wall anchors when mounting to drywall. Make sure no obstructions will prevent the roller from closing completely. Position the cable tension monitor and mark the mounting hole locations. Drill pilot holes using a 3 16 inch drill bit. Attach the cable tension monitor using the provided hardware. Position the roller on top of the cable. Route the wire to the operator, making sure to avoid all moving parts of the door, including the drum. Secure the wire using insulated staples. Open the cover of the operator and route the wire up through the bottom to the green quick connect terminals. Use a small screwdriver to push in the tabs and insert the wires from the cable tension monitor. Polarity is not important. Next, install the single button control station. The control station must be mounted within sight of the door, out of the reach of children, at a minimum height of 5 feet, and away from all moving parts of the door. Remove the control station cover. Remove one of the knockouts so you can route wiring to the operator. Mount the control station to a smooth, flat surface using appropriate hardware. This installation has wiring already in place. Connect the wires to the control station and replace the cover. Fasten the warning placard next to the single button control station. 
open the cover of the operator and locate the Quick Connect terminals. Wire the control station to the operator by inserting one wire in the white terminal and the other wire in the red terminal. Do not connect power to the operator yet or use the single button control station to run the operator at this time. The protector system consists of safety reversing sensors which are mounted on each side of the door at floor level. Safety reversing sensors are to be installed no more than 6 inches from the floor. Snap the sensor bracket onto the door track, then mount the safety reversing sensor using the provided wing nut and bolt. If your installation is not pre-wired for safety reversing sensors, follow the instructions for routing the wires that are attached to the sensors. Since this installation is pre-wired, we'll splice the wires from the safety reversing sensors to the existing wiring. For pre-wired installations, be sure to note the wire colors you're splicing to because polarity is important. Open the cover of the operator and locate the white and black Quick Connect terminals. Route the safety reversing sensor wires into the operator. Twist the white wires together, then twist the black wires together. Using a small screwdriver to push in the tab, insert the white wires in the white terminal and the black wires in the gray terminal. Plug the operator into the electrical outlet, but do not run the operator. This will allow you to confirm the function of the safety reversing sensors. The sending sensor amber LED should be on solid. The receiving sensor's green LED should be on solid. If the sending sensor amber LED is off, make sure of the following. The operator has power. The wire from the sensor is not broken or shorted. The wires are wired to the correct terminals on the operator. If the receiving sensor green LED is flickering or off, loosen the wing nut and adjust the sensor position until the LED glows solid. Openers manufactured starting in 2022 have a Step Saver Setup label. If your opener has this label, follow these steps. Otherwise, watch the section of the video for openers that do not have this label. There are three buttons you'll use. The Up button, the Down button, and the Adjustment button. Press and hold the Adjustment button until the Up button begins to flash. The lights on the safety reversal sensors will turn off because they will be temporarily disconnected during programming. Now. Press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up or open position. To prevent damage to vehicles, be sure the fully open door provides adequate clearance. Once the door is in the fully open position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener will make an audible sound or one quick beep and the down button will start flashing. Now, press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or closed position. Once the door reaches the correct closed position, press and release the adjustment button. The garage door opener will make an audible sound or one quick beep. Programming travel is now complete. The safety reversal sensors will reconnect and their lights will turn back on. The opener will beep and the lights will flash when it enters a force sensing operation. The door will automatically open and close. Then, the opener will beep three times, letting you know the force setting is complete. If the garage door opener makes one long audible beep, then programming has timed out and travel limits have not been set. You'll need to restart the process again. For products that do not have the Step Saver Setup label, follow these steps. First, press and hold the Adjustment button until the Up button begins to flash. Now. Press and hold the up button until the door is in the desired up or open position. Once the door is in the correct open position, press and release the adjustment button. The down button will start flashing. Now, press and hold the down button until the door is in the desired down or closed position. Once the door reaches the correct closed position, press and release the adjustment button. The up button will begin to flash. Now press and release the up button. When the door travels to the open position, the down button will begin to flash. Press and release the down button. The door will travel to the closed position. 
programming the travel for the operator is now complete. Anytime you make any adjustments, the safety reversal system must be tested. Complete the installation by testing the protector system and performing the safety reversing test. Consult the manual or watch our instructional videos for more information on how to perform these tests. Your installation is complete. For more information, visit us on the web at liftmaster.com.